Welcome to the OWASP um, 20th anniversary. Can't believe it's been 20 years. Um, I have obviously not been around for all of that. Um, I am Veronica, otherwise known as V. Uh, the community more knows me as V. And I'm probably that cyborg that is obsessed with logs. Uh, so who am I? Some of you might not know me. Currently, I'm an assistant professor at Norf University in very cold and chilly Norway. I'm also a director at DFIR Labs dealing specifically with incident response. So when the building kind of burns, that's when I normally come in and try and put out fires. I'm also a security engineer working with developers with medical devices. I am a self-professed cyborg and yes, ask me about that in Slack and I'll tell you the story. I'm a goon for DEF CON. I also have a very baby OWASP project. Um, so I associate myself with the tags hacker, builder, protector, forensicator. Uh, and also uh, the code that I write may or may not explode. We don't know yet. It's always a possibility. So today I want to take you on a journey through logs and why I feel that they are important. Um, I have been an incident responder for approximately 12 years. I have dealt with anything from ransomware, sensitive data disclosure, most of the gnarly things that you see on the OWASP top 10, and always found myself sitting with my hands in my hair going, I wish I had better logs. Or, you know, if I had this event in the logs, we'd have the smoking gun. Or I wish I didn't have these verbose logs. Um, and I kind of sat and scratched my head and thought, well, how do I make this better? How do I make my job at the end of the day, wielding my black magic, bringing evidence from nothing or doing root cause analysis? How do I fix that? And it always, I have a saying, if nothing goes right, you push left. So I started thinking, well, surely there's something that we can do in development or how we build the software or how we build the architecture or the systems. And I kind of realized that this purple teamer was out of her debt. She didn't understand the first thing about it at all. So early on, I realized that, yeah, I was pretty, you know, understood the DFIR process. I knew where the evidence was. I knew how the logs should look. But I didn't always think like an attacker and, and, and understand the attack process. Now, the red team is the team that always wins. They only need to get in once. Um, and we have our blue teamers in this world that I'm going to paint today that defends. Uh, they are the ones that have to keep red out. And then we have the amazing green team, the builders, the one that actually is able to build you know, amazing things from nothing. But I thought to myself, well, this full circle made me better at my job. So how can I take what I've learned over the years and pass it along? I first had to do some research. Now, my research took me through very many rabbit holes, bad information. I started learning that there's a lot more that goes into building applications, building medical devices, manufacturing, engineering, debugging, fault finding. And I soon realized that if I wanted better logs, I need to influence those that build them to think like an attacker, to defend like a blue teamer, to investigate like a green teamer and be the best, uh, investigate like a purple teamer and be the best version of green they can be. A friend recommended a set of books that I think you all know, which is the Unicorn Project and the Phoenix Project. And it painted a very familiar, you know, familiar world that I was part of um, being on the operation side of things, always pointing the finger, kind of being, you know, the bully with the stick. Well, why didn't you build it more secure? And this kind of showed me that there are so many processes I didn't understand. But what stuck with me from these two books were the five philosophies. They were fairly simple philosophies, but they were well thought out. And these philosophies is what birthed the five philosophies or the five basic things when it comes to application logging that you should do, you should consider, 
and couldn't inevitably lead to better forensically ready logs. Now the book describes philosophy one as locality and simplicity. And sometimes the, you know, I find logs that are very, very difficult or not, they're very complex, they're not simple. So from philosophy one, I took the word simplicity, going back to basics, going back to doing things um, right from the start, but keeping it simple. Philosophy two was uh, the ideal of focus, flow and joy. I started interviewing development teams and developers in particular and asking them, how do you feel about your application logs? What became glaringly obvious is that they only really use their logs when they wanted to determine why something's not working. So the process of debugging. Some of them would say that our logs are so convoluted and complex, I don't really understand. But there's this one guy or this one lady on our team that understands our logs. So from here, I took the focus, the flow, and the joy as a takeaway there. Philosophy three in the books cover improvement of daily work. So constant improvement. We should strive to be better every day. We should strive to learn every day. And that was a very important thing for me. So the continuous evolvement, which is something that applications does on a regular basis. Philosophy four is probably the one that stood out the most for me being an incident response. And that is the psychological safety. Now, when there is a breach on a mobile application or in a big organization and incident response comes in, one of the things that we do as we close out a scene as a root cause analysis, it is a frank conversation of what did we do wrong? What do we need to improve? And how did we handle the incident? Now, I've also realized that much in the community, there is this shame about being breached. Your organization's been breached. There's a vulnerability on your mobile application. But that is kind of to be expected. However, where I'm more concerned of is not the fact that you've been hacked. Let's face it. We've all been there, done it, hidden it under the carpet. But why not acknowledge it and say, you know what, we're going to learn from the process but there is really psychological safety for a team to admit that we can do better. Now, philosophy five is the customer focus. So yes, we want more secure devices. We want more secure applications, but is that the functional component or are we busy building something for a client, whether it being a patient to use, whether it being a normal user to use on their mobile phone. It needs to be custom orientated. We can spend years going around trying to make something as secure as possible, and it might never get to market. Now, these five philosophies brought about by Jean Kim, and this book is something that I have been living by for the last year, has given me inspiration to create the five logging philosophies. Now, I did not develop these on my own. I had amazing, amazing developers um, from various organizations that have given input to these. So with that, I would like to introduce OWASP to my, from an incident response perspective, a security perspective, as well as someone that is really carrying development at heart, what my five simple philosophies are. Philosophy one, again, as we discussed, it is keep it simple, keep it clean and detailed enough. Now, always I get the argument, but we need the information to debug. And I agree, we need information to debug, but there are options to have a debug log that potentially could be encrypted. That doesn't necessarily have to be in plain text or accessible. Um, but keep it simple, keep it clean, and have just enough detail. There's been countless times that I've gone through log analysis, whether during a breach or during this um, project that I've been running, where I find app keys and secrets that have found their way into logs. 
I've seen print bodies containing information that potentially is sensitive. I have a simple rule in life is that whatever you put in your application log, you should consider to be public knowledge. Now, keeping it clean is meaning that when you produce code, it automatically runs into your logs. And we should be doing log maintenance, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, philosophy two is one of my favorite ones. Now it says, keep it tagged, create metadata and use it. So what do I mean with keep it tagged? Well, again, you're gonna hear a lot about sensitive data disclosure in this talk because it always happens within the logs. We don't really know what information is in our logs because we don't check them proactively. Apple does an amazing thing in their logger that they use where they data tag. So if they have certain strings like PHI, health information, personal identifiable information, app keys and secrets, they tag it appropriately. Within the code, they then build in the controls to dictate what happens with that information. Now, that is one way to deal with accidental disclosure. How often have you sat and then you get called in ironically over Christmas saying, you know, we've got information that has been leaked in logs. For me, it's been the last 12 years, almost every Christmas or New Year's. Now, metadata in digital forensics and incident response is fairly an important component. It's information about a file, but more so than that, it's information about a process. It's information about your workflow. Now, in terms of why we like seeing that information is we are able to identify what the normal process should be. Metadata also tells us more about the process that's ongoing in your application. So create the metadata and use it and tag your sensitive data so that you can build in the appropriate controls to deal with them. Now philosophy three is keep it cleaned and focused. Now it's obviously the second time that I've said cleaned and I've mentioned focused before. We all know the dreaded thing called technical debt. It is that one component that you don't want to deal with, you pretend doesn't exist and you hope someone else will deal with. Well, logging debt is a real problem. We run in sprint cycles where we update code, but as our application grows, evolves and change, do we make sure that legacy information isn't still within logs? We've had instances where the logs have become verbose become difficult to read and just convoluted in general and identified that it was a legacy component that was you know doing 64 to 80 lines of events per time that it triggers and that takes up space but more so than that sometimes we deal with an instance where we do first in first out because data constraints is a real problem well, what if your logs are so, so verbose that you are overriding, overwriting relevant information or events that have taken place that could have triggered in a security situation? Keep it clean, keep it focused. One way that we do this a lot in this project is by actually having a set percentage set to working on the logs. Every sprint cycle, we do one thing on the backlog with logs. We deal with one problem at a time, and within a year, you see your whole logs transform. Philosophy four is my favorite one, and I think I've said that about every one, but assume at some point you will be compromised and log accordingly. And this is where the workflow approach comes in. There is nothing nicer for an incident responder or a developer that's trying to debug something that's gone wrong if they can see the sequence of the workflow. Now, when we see that deviation happen, we know that something's gone wrong. 
The Science Institute has a very good saying called no normal to no evil. So you need to understand what your normal natural workflow should be. And any deviations from that in the log should indicate that something's happened. One thing that I don't often see in mobile application logs is the, you know, the ability to tell that someone's tampered with the logs. We do get something called log injection attacks or where events are overwritten or logs are scrubbed. If logs are scrubbed and we, you know, the indication of an empty log tells us something's gone wrong, but it doesn't tell us the extent of what's gone wrong. Now, there are some operating systems that employ a very good way of triggering different events if the logs have been cleaned. So thinking about um, how you will be compromised or where you are vulnerable allows you to develop robust logging around a component that is potentially flawed. If you, for example, know that you can suffer from Bluetooth-like events or attacks, why not log around that and make it robust so that you have events to monitor that it's taken place? It's all about thinking what potentially can give you a clue that someone's misbehaving on your application. Now, philosophy five for me is one of those that when I discuss this with developers, it's not one that's considered. And this is specifically where your application runs on someone else's device. So consider who has access to your logs, how they are stored and how they are transported. Now in digital forensics and incident response, we talk about the Lacard process. We say that if two things come into connection with each other, trace evidence is left behind. But I also say that we should consider that our application runs on a device that's behind enemy lines. So we need to have ways to check the integrity of the contents of the logs. We need to ensure that the information in perhaps our debug, debug level um, log that contains more sensitive nature is perhaps encrypted. And I know iOS runs in its own sandbox environment and there are different things that you can do, but consider this in digital forensics, we take physical acquisitions of devices to access that information. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, that it's safe. So you need to consider that your application is running on a device that is potentially hostile. I wanna reiterate that all roads lead to the logs. And I'm gonna pose a question that I want you to think about. And I am gonna give you the answer here. We all do incident response, whether you blue team, whether you red team, whether you purple team or green team, we do incident response. We all look at the logs from different perspectives. The red team, for example, will look at their logs or logs that they've obtained to see how much information they can gather about how, you work, how your application works, how it authenticates, how they could potentially coming in. It's, it's low hanging fruit. Then you get blue team that look at logs to you know, tell them that something's gone wrong or that something's busy going wrong. We have our amazing green team that looks at logs to find why something's not working. And purple team, when we do incident response, it means that red has broken in, blue's been unable to stop them and something has gone wrong. But that is a little too late to fix anything. We simply can advise on what to do better in future. So we all do incident response, whether it's field investigations, whether it's reconnaissance, whether it's defending, it is just the perspective of what we need to get from the logs that differ. No talk would be um, worthwhile without some very wise words and not necessarily from me. Uncle Bob, who you all should know if you don't Google him, writes amazing books, he gives amazing talks, but he says, be kind to your future self when writing code. I take it a little bit further. Be kind to your future forensicator. Inevitably, we will be reading your logs. Make them you know, easily understandable. Make us understand your workflow. Have a standard, have a structure. What I can tell you is your logs tell me a lot about your code and your team. 
if you only take away one paragraph today, it should be your logs should be simple, structured, which is super important. They should contain also enough information without disclosing any of your sensitive data. Often ac accidental information disclosure happens within the logs, and that actually potentially opens you to future breaches. Now, those are the five philosophies, but where do they fit in? There is an OWASP project called the Secure Logging Benchmark, meaning that there is a spreadsheet that is based upon security controls translated into events that include debugging, privacy. Now, it's very much in its infancy, but it's looking to standardize our approach to logging, our terminology that we use. Even our log levels. One of the things that I've noticed speaking to different teams within a, the same organization is our understanding of the log levels differ and what they mean and what they should be assigned to. Introducing event categories within your logs is a very easy way for you to identify whether a component of code is misbehaving or giving errors. An example of this is on logs that we've made those changes with, we saw an influx of specific things happening across a certain category. That category was linked to a specific portion of code. And they were easily able to follow the steps back and find where the problem was. As well as this project helps you deal with classification of data. So a standard understanding of what's private, sensitive, what should be confidential and what are some ways you can deal with them. It helps you with the structure to your logs. It also helps you with the content and identifying where you've got weaknesses so that you can fix it. Event writing is something that should be happening right in the beginning. I always say logging should be a feature, not a byproduct of code. But this project aims to actually help you build in forensic readiness, the ability to detect and the ability to investigate. It also gives you some plans on dealing with log hygiene. Soon I will be publishing two weeks worth of training material specifically that you can take and you can have in your organization, as well as a guide to help you apply these principles within your development framework. Now, if you feel very much overwhelmed with logging and you really need help, I also offer my time free of charge to teams to help them become passionate about logs. I love logs, you should love logs, and they should become your friend. If you wanna have um, read more about what we are doing on the project, get involved, please feel free to either hit me up on Twitter, find me, on the OWASP project page and join me in building an army of forensic coding ninjas so that we can have better logs to do incident response.